Today is Friday, October the 1st, 2021. The title of today's devotional is, I Shall Not Be Moved. The scripture reading, the Psalm 62 and Psalm 64. Now, both of the Psalms today carry a familiar theme, a familiar refrain. Uh, while I cannot say with certainty the occasion that inspired Psalm 62 or Psalm 64, the subject and content fit the trauma and sorrow that David suffered when Absalom led a rebellion against him. Each of the Psalms affords us an insight into the wicked bent of men and their nature. The devotional, however, I am limiting to Psalm 62. Now, I've given the overall theme here of Psalm 62, David's confidence in the Lord in the times of trouble. Now, though he was hated by his son and hunted by those who would kill him, David, nevertheless, in verses 1 and 2 of Psalm 62, declares his faith in the Lord, saying, Truly, that is surely, my soul waiteth upon God. Now the word waiteth means to wait and rest. And then he goes on and he writes concerning the Lord, From him cometh my salvation, my help. And then this uh, repeated title of the Lord that we find throughout the Psalms, and he writes of God, he, that is God, only is my rock. Uh, we can think of a, a great rock, a fortress, if you would, and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Now, think about it. If we are right in the setting of this psalm is during that time when David has fled from Jerusalem, he's fled from his palace, his son and the cohorts that have joined him in the insurrection are looking to kill David. And yet David's faith is stilled. He finds solace and rest. I think if ever there was a man who had a cause for a panic attack or paralyzing anxieties, it was David. And yet he was confident the Lord was his rock, his fortress, his salvation, and his defense. And so at the end of verse 2, with boldness, David proclaims, I shall not be greatly moved. Wow, what a moment of faith and commitment. Now verse 3 and 4 of Psalm 62, you should find an interesting study. It is that evil, wicked men prey upon weakness. Now, David's song invites you to consider the moral decline of men and how they prey upon those they seek to destroy. I hope that you have your Bible and you would look at Psalm 62 and verse 3 and 4 and realize it is an exposition of what men of this world are truly like. Verse 3, for instance, we read, How long, now David praying, How long, and saying to the enemy, how long will ye imagine mischief? How long will you assault me against a man? You, speaking of his enemies, you shall be slain. All of you is a bowing or a bending wall that is ready to collapse or as a tottering broken fence. The wicked only consult, they plot, and they plan to cast down David from his excellency, that is, from his dignity. Uh, the wicked delight, they take pleasure in lies, they bless with their mouth, and yet they curse inwardly. And to stop for a moment and meditate on what David revealed about the ways of the wicked, not only in his day, but in our day. This was written 3,000 years ago, and yet nothing has changed. What David observed as the character of evil men is mirrored everywhere in our world today. Politicians, liberal media, power brokers, they do not hesitate to lie, distort, and destroy the character 
of good men and women. In fact, the wicked probe for a man's weakness, and if they find it, they attack him with a vengeance. And if they are unable to find a fault, they will court your favor, pretend to be your friend, and curse you behind your back. That's a pretty deplorable state of the men of this world. But we see it everywhere around us. The, the news, the newsmakers, the politicians, they are all bent to prey upon the weak and the trusting. And so Psalm 62, we ask the question, what can we take from this psalm? Well, consider this. It is the nature of evil men to sting a good man's reputation with lies and assault his character. In fact, I would suggest you and I should not be surprised when a godly man is attacked by those intent to break his spirit and bring him to shame. For they, the ungodly, are only doing that which is in their nature to do. And so what hope is there for believers when they are cruelly attacked? Well, David answers that question in the balance of Psalm 62, and I offer a brief summary. In verse 5, we see repeated again the phrase of waiting on the Lord and hoping in Him. Verse 6, we're reminded that the Lord is a rock, fortress of salvation. In verse 8, we should trust Him at all times, pour out our heart before the Lord, for God is a refuge. And know this, verse 9, that all men, the lowly, and the high and the powerful, they are all deluded, empty shells. And David writes, and they're lighter than vanity. They are empty. They're like a puff of air. And I challenge you as I close today, never, ever put your faith or confidence in men. And then we're reminded in verse 12, this truth. God will render to every man according to his work. I often say it, and I repeat it again. In the words of the evangelists, there is a payday someday for all men. God bless you. Be bold in the faith. And have the confidence that David had, not in himself, but in the Lord. And say this regarding the truths of God's word, that you will stand there and you will not be moved. God bless you. Bye-bye.